But we begin in the nation's capital where the House adjourned late tonight without electing a speaker for a second straight day. Kevin Cork is live in D.C. with the very latest. Kevin, good evening. Evening, Trace. Three more failed votes today and a round of closed-door talks to boot. And yet still, Congressman-elect Kevin McCarthy appears no closer to securing the House speaker, a speakership. Of course, that is Speaker of the House, for those of you who haven't been watching. Uh, the uh, battle does continue tomorrow at 12 noon. Though he did quip tonight, I think this is interesting, uh, I crawl before I walk, before I run. A bit of optimism, perhaps, for Kevin McCarthy. We'll see if that is warranted. In all, the defiant Californian has now fallen short in six, count of six, votes over two days as a group of 20 conservatives who have deemed him ideologically unreliable, let's say have refused to back him, leaving him short of the 218 votes needed to win the job. Are you considering dropping out of the No, not at all. Are you angry at the people who have caused no, the situation? not at all. I think it's productive. We can't have a situation where 20 members hold 202 members hostage and our agenda hostage. We were elected as well. Uh, and this is turning into a blackmail situation. Meanwhile, recalcitrant GOP insurgents say it's McCarthy who needs to step aside. Even having my favorite president call us and tell us we need to knock this off, I think it actually needs to be reversed. The president needs to tell Kevin McCarthy that, sir, you do not have the votes and it's time to withdraw. Speaking of former President Trump, he said this in a statement. I think it's a dangerous game. And frankly, if they're not happy with him, they can do something about it at a later date. He added this. I support Kevin McCarthy and I support getting the deal done. What I don't support is allowing this to continue onward. And while the battle, as mentioned, rages on tomorrow, it is also important to note that as long as this all continues, committees can't hire staff because there are no committee chairs and no ranking members, which has led some Democrats to call this a crisis of the Congress. Others, frankly, Trace, feel like this is all good stuff. It's just battle as it should be here in the nation's capital. Yeah, I hear both sides. Kevin Cork, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in Florida Republican Congressman-elect Matt Gates. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Kevin McCarthy tonight did not want to hold a vote in the House because he believes he might be getting closer. Do you think that's a fair assessment? Well, there's a reason Kevin McCarthy doesn't want to continue having votes, and it's because with each vote, he seems to be decreasing in his vote share, and we've only increased with votes in our vote share in opposition to Kevin McCarthy. We suspect that that trend is likely to continue, and I think this ends one of two ways, Trace. Either Kevin bows out, realizing there's no path for him to become Speaker of the House, even if he picks up one or two or three or five of the 20 who have opposed him half a dozen times on the floor, or he essentially has to wake up, bring the House into session, and put on a straitjacket with a rules package that we've presented to him that doesn't allow a lot of discretion for the Speaker of the House. The reason we've demanded that is that we do not trust Kevin McCarthy, and it's not a small body of work. The guy's been in leadership in Washington, D.C. for 14 years, and this town needs to change, and we're going to change it one way or the other, either by changing out the Speaker or by having the most fundamental rewrite of the rules in really uh, my lifetime. There seems to be a lot of confusion, though, about exactly what this group of 20 wants. You say rules changes. A lot of people have said a lot of different things. Is there something specific, Congressman, that you want that would gain uh, your vote to Kevin McCarthy if that thing was fulfilled? Well, I'm not voting for Kevin McCarthy, but there are some of the 20 who I suspect might if we got control of the Rules Committee and the Appropriations Committee in the hands of folks that don't vote for bad rules and bad appropriations bills. Remember, before this last omnibus, Kevin McCarthy was paving the way for some of the worst legislation, driving our country deeper into debt and borrowing against the futures of the next generation. And so if we got control of those key committees in the hands of conservatives, I think there are some of the 20 who might vote for Kevin McCarthy. Uh, if things stand as they are, I would suspect that the opposition will only grow. Yeah, you've got people like former Congressman Trey Gowdy who said they called this opposition a clown show on national television. The former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, has said that you are holding the House hostage. What is your response to that type of criticism? 
Well, Trey Gowdy would know something about clown shows. That's probably how a lot of us would categorize the Benghazi hearings that resulted in people screaming at each other in a big report, but no real accountability. Uh, I remember the Trey Gowdy who went on your network as a congressman and said that he'd reviewed what had gone on with the FBI and the Department of Justice and that they had done nothing wrong and that actually the American people would be happy of what they were looking at with President Trump. We now, of course, know that to be false, and even Trey Gowdy has expressed regret about that. So I don't exactly take uh, a lot of armchair quarterbacking from uh, someone who during his time in Congress wasn't among the fighters. Uh, Representative-elect Mike Lawler said the following. Listen and I'll get your response. The people who are voting against Kevin McCarthy in the Republican conference are aiding Joe Biden, aiding Hakeem Jeffries, and aiding Chuck Schumer. How can you come together and do what you promised the American people you would do as Republicans after this kind of chaotic House speakership vote? Well, I think the world of Mike Lawler, he's a terrific representative and he's going to do a great job for the people of New York. But I wouldn't exactly call this like insurmountable chaos. Keep in mind, Trace, I mean, there are days in the United States Congress where the only vote that happens is to rename one post office. So if we could do that for a day, if there are days where all we vote on are how we are going to take the next vote, then maybe taking two or three days or several weeks to select the person who is second in line to the presidency is worth our debate and deliberation. And after that, absolutely, we will come together. I have every confidence that we'll be able to come together and we'll actually be an effective fighting force if we're able to get rid of Kevin McCarthy and get somebody like a Jim Jordan, a Byron Donalds in that speaker's chair. And, and what do you say to those who say, why is this group of 20 so convinced that they should be listened to and that they should control the narrative and the process when 202 other uh, GOP House members believe in a totally different way? Well, Trace, I have to correct you there. It's only 201 now. You're referencing an earlier vote for Kevin McCarthy, but actually Congresswoman Victoria Sparts voted present. So again, his number continues to drop, may end up under 200 tomorrow. We're not trying to dictate terms. We represent our constituents. Look, part of the group think of Washington, D.C. is you come here and you've just got to give the lobbyists your vote card and the leadership your calendar and everything will be okay. Kevin McCarthy has no ideology. Even his own supporters would admit that in private. He is simply a vessel through which lobbyists and special interests operate. So it's not that we're not being team players. It's just that my team are the people in Florida who sent me here to fight for them. My team is not the assembly of groupthink that occurs inside the swamp. we got to drain this swamp. We shouldn't put one of the alligators in charge. And the voting begins again tomorrow at noon. Congressman, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Trace.